Hi guys, welcome back. Hope you had a good weekend. It's getting close to the next weekend now. <laughs> Thursday today, yeah. here where I am. Yeah. Right, I said I was going to be doing a cowboy hat on the next one, so I thought I better do it because I've said it twice now and I haven't done it, so I thought <laughs> I better do this cowboy hat. Now this is that piece of obese African white wood, okay? Now this is quite dry and it's quite light. I don't know how it's going to turn for a cowboy hat. I'm hoping it's going to be all right. For when I do the rim, I should probably steam it or just wet it to get it to bend, see what happens. Um, it looks quite stable. It's very stable wood. This actual wood is the same wood that was used in the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang car. Okay, so if you watch a film, Chitty Chitty Bang oh. Bang, <laughs> this is the same wood. Now, like I said before, I'm not saying this is a piece of wood from that car, like an off-cut, but... <laughs> I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> I think, I, I looked at the film and I actually, I'm sure that the matches the, the grain. Yeah. I think it is. So <laughs> that's my opinion, but I'm not giving any guarantees on that. <laughs> right, anyway, I'm going to be turning this. So, but before I do, add a little play of some toys. I've got myself uh, a sander, but I'll show, show you that in a minute. Why the hell I want a sander, I don't know. But I got myself, I don't look, now, let me get this right. I'm sure it's Phil, it's Phil, I think, Anderson. I'm sure it's Anderson. If I'm not, I'll correct that on the next one. Um, Shady Acres, I think it is, his channel. He done a thing on the little one-handed, the cordless uh, saws, chainsaws. Well, I've been looking to get one for a little while, cause, but I'm, yeah, you see him, I don't want to pay 200 that, odd pound that for a, or 300 pound for a steel one and all that sort of stuff i just want something cheap and cheerful i don't use i'm not going to use it a lot probably a few times a year that's it but i've seen loads of them on ebay and i thought i don't know what they're actually like you know you see them and like, ah, you think are they going to be any good well guys i've got one <laughs> okay here we are look chainsaw massacre <laughs> right <laughs> i've got one it is so light it's unbelievable now, just to show you, in case you're wondering, if any of you have seen, you might have them. Fair enough, that's good, you'll know what they're like. If you've seen them and you're not sure, well, this is a piece of that eucalyptus that is very heavy because it's wet. I'm just gonna put it in my um, my saw horse here. Good old faithful, that's, God, that's donkey's <laughs> years old, this one. It's brilliant. Now, I have already had a go and cut a piece off and it does cut through this. It's more technique than anything. You've got to get it right. Remember, this isn't a petrol. I've got a petrol chainsaw. I've got an electric chainsaw, plug-in one. I'm going to be getting a bigger cordless one. But I just wanted one of these. And the reason I want it, where I take the dogs for a walk, um, there's loads of trees. The branches come off the trees, and they're big branches. And they're just all laying about there. For me, perfect. And I want it something like this. I can stick in a little rucksack, take over with me, and cut a few pieces like that sort of size, that length up to sort of four inches round, you know, and bring them home and turn them. Why not? It's only left there, so I think it's just gonna rot away. But anyway, I thought I'll show you how it cuts on here, okay? And it's just a one-handed thing, so we're gonna come in. Now, obviously, don't force it in, guys. It's only a cordless. And this is quite a hard piece of wood, this. Just let it go under its own steam. I'm not forcing it. Right, it's coming through. There we go, look at that. <laughs> and now that, I mean, you think that's, look, that's, yeah. And that is, oh, I'll tell you what, you won't get a lot like of if you're cutting that. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I can rub that on my chest. Like, you can, Free from I cold. love the smell of eucalyptus <laughs> car. But look at that, guys. That's gone straight through that. Mm -hmm. Not a bad cut, is it, eh? <laughs> and, I mean, these these smaller little bits, like a little bit of, um, that's a little bit of you there. Oops, sorry. I'm, 
I'm in the way of that. I'm just going to turn around. Sorry. I'm catching on that. I can't get in there. Look. There you go. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, if you know, guys, you know what you've got. Cutting is very hard wood. Okay. Sorry, uh, the motor was catching on that when I was cutting the first side. But there you go. So, perfect. Now, still sound full charge on it, okay? 21 volt, now it's a sissy viz, okay? <laughs> I know the one uh, Phil was using was a uh, Seika, and I've seen loads of others, okay? That one. Come Now, this comes with two batteries, all right? You get two batteries, they're so lightweight. It's a one and a half hour charge, okay? I just stuck them both on charge as soon as I got it. Um, it can't, you get the charger, okay, and you get, that's the six inch blade on there, the six inch um, chain. You also get a four inch and the four inch chain, and obviously the tools and a pair of gloves. All that, free delivery, £28.50. Cool, blimey. Cool, blimey, gov. <laughs> Blow me socks off. Okay, off of eBay. Um, comes with the guy when you get it, it doesn't come in a chain, you just take this plastic bit off. But it's so easy to do. Put the chain on, put the doobry bit on the bar, <laughs> do your nut up, little tension screw under there, tighten it up, Bob's your uncle, fanny's your aunt, and there you go. Ready for Halloween. <laughs> and I, yeah, I can see I can put that. The beauty is, I can pop that. I take, obviously, take, I'll take the battery off. You know, if I'm putting, stick that in my rucksack. Go for a walk over the park, take it out, boom, cut a few little bits for me to bring back. Like I say, I only want little bits like this, and there you go. Well, it's not a park, it's a wooded area. Um, I thought absolutely fantastic. So there you go. I'll let you know in time how long it lasts, but I think in all honesty, they're all the same. They just, same case, same everything. They just put different names on it, don't they? So there you go. But really lightweight. And of course, if anyone comes and attacks you, you can... <laughs> Chainsaw massacre, can't you? <laughs> yeah. Come on in, you mother thingy bob. <laughs> Bring it on. Right. Anyway, they're cut now. Look at that. That was quite a nice. Look, look, look. Done Even. perfect. Now they're going to be. I should cut them down the middle. I should probably do that on my bandsaw. Cut it down, and then um, I'll be making cowboy hats out of that. Wet ones. Mm -hmm. Wet ones. Right. I'm just going to before I go anywhere. I'm going to put my table on here just in case it's. Needed. See, I just have a oh, this pops up here. Showing you all my little bits here. Right, there, put that box in there, and that okay, then turns into a table. And I have two bench vices on that as well. One either side. There you go. Right, okay, guys. The other thing I've got to say, £28.50, I can believe, and it came in three days. I bought that come three days posted out Royal Mail so that was really good and I got tracking and everything to say it was being delivered the, the lot the other thing I bought was uh, yeah me <laughs> yeah that. you one of these and yes that is plugged into electric power <laughs> <laughs> now the reason being the actual main reason I bought this I was doing some uh, work on some cupboards and stuff and I had to put some screws in corner ones you know the bits guy you put on the end of your cordless, they're absolute crap, aren't they? Why can't I design something that really works? You've got to use two hands, you know, 90 degree angle thing, show you put screws in, yeah, like like hell you can. But this, brilliant, one hand, I put had a magnetic uh, holder in there, so it helped to put a screw on it, under there, like that, zzz, yeah, straight in, beautiful. Um, and of course, I've seen quite a few people use these for sa the sanding, and I thought, well, my little one here, it's, it's really coming to it. I've had this for so, I, I, this has got to be about 18 years old now, and it still works, but it's only a 10.8 volt. Yeah, 10.8 volt. And my batteries have been charged so many thousands of times that they don't hold as much charge as they used to, but it still does as a nice little screwdriver, you know, for small bits, so I've, I'm gonna keep it. But for sanding, it after time it's running out pan, it clicks, you hear it going click, 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 click. Mm. That's where the, the lathe's turning faster than the drill's turning. <laughs> or the wood is. 
So I got myself this and I thought I can use that for a bit of sanding. So, which as I said, there's, I'm not, I'm, people think I'm against sand. I'm not against sanding. Um, sanding, sanding to make your piece nice and get a good finish and everything is, is fine, absolutely, that's brilliant, that's fantastic. So, using something like this to make your turning look good, that's not so good. When you've got torn grain, when you've got tool marks, learn to get them out with your tools, not sand them out. But yeah, this is fantastic. I mean, you know, yeah, that's sand away. Look, I don't need tools anymore. I could just wood turn with that, couldn't I? <laughs> but anyway, so I'll be using that on, on a few bits, guys, and mm -hmm. you can see. I think it's brilliant. Uh, 150 that. I've got it from Tool Stop. 149, 149 pound postage with free postage. And I bought that at two o'clock yesterday and it came at half past 12 today. Yeah. Okay, two o'clock yesterday afternoon and it was delivered by DPD this afternoon at 12, half past 12. Okay, and I had to do some screwing in there. That's why I bought it and I thought that's gonna be brilliant because I'll use it out here as well. And the thing I really like about it, although it's variable speed, is you can actually adjust that so it's, you can just hold on to it and it ain't gonna go any faster than that speed. So I like that as well, but mostly I'll leave it on and just, well, I probably won't leave it on that far, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Take no away the whole wood. I'll have no piece left, will yeah. I? <laughs> right, anyway, guys, so that's that's enough of that. Makita one. Yeah, very good. I'll let you know how that goes. I'll keep, I'll be, you'll see me using that. Right, I'm going to put this onto a, a worm screw. And then we've got to turn this. Now, I might do this video in two parts. Although it depends because I've done a bit, a little bit of... Um, uh, you know, advertising for people, a bit of, you know, <laughs> showing their wares. <laughs> right, there you go, that's on, that's it, tight enough. Because remember, I'm turning this to a cowboy hat, so I don't want to whack that on really tight because I'm going to have trouble getting it off. Well, I'm going to pop this on just to bring it up for a bit of security um, while I take this down. Now, this isn't <sighs> measurement wise. I meant to say, this is 180 mil, seven inches, okay? Seven inches and it is 75 mil, three inches thick, okay? Now, this isn't a cowboy hat that's gonna be worn, so I can't really work to any measurements of like head, size, head sizes, which if it's gonna be worn, you'd have to take, because you know, people, some people got Big head. peanut head, some people's got flat head, some people's got square head, some people's got round head, all different shaped heads. Not everyone's got perfect shaped head like me <laughs> so you have to yeah um now i'm looking at this i've got to decide on how much i want for my side so tom i'll level it up i'm thinking about 80 mil for the center which i've already marked on the other side and then the rest of it will be for the hat bit so all i'm going to do at first I'm not worrying about the face i'm just going to take this down get this down to a a thickness down here uh, and get the rough shape of the hat now as I said because you're not making measurements picture a cowboy hat just picture it in your mind okay and and the slight the slight taper to it okay you want that slight taper so yeah just literally guys picture it in your mind of what you're gonna try to achieve now I'm gonna use just different tools probably use a bowl gouge at first on this um, use maybe a spindle gouge i use a spindle gouge for quite a bit of it as well maybe some carbide we'll see how we get on i mean can you turn this with carbide yes you can and i'll do a bit so you can see that we can do it with all the tools right okay so first off i'll put some i don't know whether you need the light on do you i don't think you're doing probably not, not for that for bit, bit no right i'm going to turn it down a bit just to get started, I'm going to stand over here. I know nothing's going to come off. Right, now I'm going to turn, get it turned up a bit. A little bit of vibration, so I've just gone through that. Very quickly. Right, that's good for a minute. I'll just, just take a few cuts, okay? So I'm just going to come in and see what it's going to cut like first.
that's nice actually. Right, I'm swimming my tool rest in. Now at the moment, I'm just cutting in to get this, this piece down a bit. This I've left at the moment is still about an inch wide, okay? I'm not worried about the rim at the moment. And as you can see, I am cutting, I'm well above centre where I'm cutting on, on this. But I always say I cut above centre. Slicing in, I'm not scraping, I'm just slicing in, I'm using the running the bevel and just slicing, just doing some slicing cuts, but beveled in contact and all it is is rotating the tool, okay? And at this point I'm just getting it down to size really I've got to make sure I get that nice and smooth there we go a bit of a dusty wood this we're getting shavings but we're, it's also very dusty right okay I've got to think of yeah I'm just picturing this hat in my head Sounds funny though, not on my head, in my head. Now of course if you want, let me just bring this round a little bit. I mean if you want to on this, you could. Let me see what I've got. Here we go. I've only got it in this handle. You could just use your R2 chisel and come in. So again, cut down. Go that way. Don't go in that way, okay? But you can use that to go in. Now, I'm going back to the others, so I'm getting near to the point where I'm going to be um, getting my shape. And I, I want this hat. So... Keeping this one, are we? Well, I don't say I'm keeping it, but I want it to work. Okay. Now, I'm not worrying about putting the tenon on this end yet until I decide what size I want the actual hat to be, okay? I've got to come thinner with this rim. As you notice, I'm coming in, I'm dropping my handle. So as I come in there, I don't want to scrape out flat because I'm going to block the tool.
but by dropping the hand off, I can get a, a really smooth cut. I think that's going to be all right there, actually. And I want this slightly round. I don't want it to go in as a, a, a flat, like um, like a square, like a 90 degree, because that won't, when it bends, it, it'll snap. So when you come round, close the flute, because you don't want the flute up and come across, you'll get a catch. Close the flute, and then drop your handle, nice and slowly and controlled. See there, try to grab. I would normally do this with a spindle gouge, not a bowl gouge. But by dropping my handle, You'll see the finish in a minute on this. Right, okay. I'm going to bring that in a bit more, but I'm going to use a different tool to do it. Right. Let me just stop it and have a look and see what the wood looks like first. Now you can see that finisher there. Look, that's a beautiful finish there. Okay. And that's that's by when you come down. If you pull straight across, you're just scraping on the bottom. That that tool, I wish you could touch it. it it's still like a razor blade. It is so sharp, it really is. I mean, you just cut your finger on that. It is so sharp. And it stays sharp because I'm not scraping. I'm cutting, everything is a cut. Here, I, I drop, as I come across, I drop my handle. So the wood is coming down onto the blade, not across it, okay? It's coming down onto an edge, like that. Right, okay. That's not a crack, that's uh, just in the wood. Right, I'm now going to go over to a spindle gouge to get this bit done here, okay? And for that, I'm going to use this one. Just a half-inch spindle gouge. I'm going to put a tenon on the top, so I feel I'm going to keep that sort of height, and I'll be taking this off, making it fit. I'll put a slight very slight curve in that okay which will help it to curve over i'm going to be putting a tenon in the top of this once i've Sort of like a little slight, very slight flat here. That's it. Got it. We've got a vibration now, don't we, Matt? Right, okay. I'm happy with that. That's not too bad. I'm going to come in and put a tenon on here. It will be taken off later, so. Right, straight over. That's my tenon. I'll hold that with whatever chuck holds it, okay? But that'll be taken off at, at the end anyway. Now, is that going to be too... No, that's all right. That's good, that. I'm happy with that. Very happy. Right. I just want to... If I can come in here, I'm actually going to change the gouge to one with a, a longer bevel. This one's got a longer bevel on it, it's more pointed. Because I just want to come in and now see, push cut, you're always going to get that push cut's no good because I can feel it's better, it's, it's clean. But I can feel it bouncing, so I'm going to have to shear cut it. Well, the trouble is I can't, can't get in there. I can, I can. I might take the fucking thing away. I don't need it no more. That's just in my way. I don't need that. Let's get that out of the way. Thank you, darling. Oh, there you go. Right, so now I can. So now I can come in here and I can get a... Get 
got a bit of a shave cut on it. That's, that's beautiful. I've cut it a little bit high there, but that, that's all right. That's not too bad. Okay, yeah, I'm happy to go with that. I'm going to go with that as my outside, okay? So now, because I've got it, I'm going to use my super duper bang bang on sandy. Look at this. Well, I'm going to adjust that to far too far. There we go. You gotta be careful, you don't generate too much heat. It's a 180 grit paper. Quite a nice pattern actually on that. Well, I'm going to 
Right, there we are. That's what I'm going to do on the outside, anyway. I'm not putting no... Oh, that's got a bit black there and a bit light there. But that's all right. That's, yeah, that's a band. It's, that'd be fine. I'll live with that. Right, um, it's on a screw. The band could have worked out a little bit better, really. But never mind, that's all right. It's on there. It's going to look nice when it's a hat, okay? Yeah, so now just have a look at it and think, when that curls up, yeah, that'd be all right. Okay, so now we're going to mount that in the truck. Right, that's not going to be the best truck for it. I didn't think it would be, I thought I'd see. No, it's not. I'm going to use my sharp one. That's alright. I'm going to go for the sharp jaws. There we go. That up there. That key there. That's it. Right. It's just holding for grip, so not for perfect circle. So I'm thinking this is going to go in here. Yep. Alright, there we go. That's it, we've got it. And it's running true as well, so that's good. So everything's running true. Okay, so what I'm gonna do very quickly, first off, oh. <clears throat> Right, that is just under the thickness of the bottom of my hat, see? That's just under it. So I'm just slightly over, over what I estimated there. Now, I, I can estimate this because I refine things as I get a little bit closer. Might everyone, some people want to go dead and be very accurate and all that. I'm quite happy to just... Put that little mark there. Like so. And then when I start that up. Ooh, I'm going to be just there. So I'm going to start that up. I'm going to be just there. Okay, and let me check. Yep, there you go. I weren't far out, was I? I was actually dead on. Right, that's going to be where the inside bit, for me to hollow, and I know I'm not going to go through this bit, okay? Right, let's get those back up out there out of the way. Right, so, first things first, we're going to have to take a few cuts across. Well, I'm going to start, I'm going to actually start the little bit with the hollowing, so I know where I'm going to, then I'll come back and do this rim, okay? I'm going to start doing my rim here. Now, a lot of people will come and go this way with do the rims of cover. I always like to push cut 
and come out and I like to get this edge done first okay because it's the um, the edge I'm slightly above on my center there I'm just going to bring that down a fraction not that much there right okay Right, and I'm curling it because that's going to help when I come round, right? I'm going to put my finger behind it for that cut so I can keep control of it. Right, I've got a lot of meat just here. So now I'm alright now, I'm going to just come in here. Right, I'm going to have to just change over to a smaller spindle gal. A little bit easier to control on this bit. No, it's not. It's better with the bigger one. Sorry. Get a little bit of vibration off of that one. It's actually better with the big one. You don't know unless you try. I'm not thin enough yet there. I've still got more to go. This is a bit that takes the time guys, you can't take it in one cut. You've really got to keep perfect control here. about watching you where you where you're cutting keeping the bevel in touch and watching where you're cutting on it you're doing good there right i'm going to start hollowing some of this out now because i need to get where it's going to be Now this ain't the best of ones to go across the bottom bit. Let me put the light on for you. You can see what I'm doing. 
This ain't the best to go across the bottom bit because of the steepness of the bevel, okay? But it's good to get them down the sides. Now, I can see I've got quite a way I can come over yet. Not really trying to do the bottom bit at the moment. I just want to get this here where my rim is. Now I can feel I've got a lot of thickness there. Just to show you where we're at. So, out here, where you can see there, okay, this is the thickness we've got, right? Now, as we come in, as I come into there, at that point there, I've got that thickness. And then where I am here, where I'm coming in, just there, I've got that thickness, okay? So I've still got some more meat to come off here, okay? Now, I haven't really got any flex there, but I think that's going to be, I'm not going to push it, and if I go too thin, it won't be nice about thin enough. When I wet this, that will, that will curve, okay? I've, I would imagine this was going to curve all right. But what I've got to do now, I've got to bring this round here and come in there a bit more. But we've got, look, beautiful finish out here. We're still working on this bit here. Try and take two thick of cut in one go. Little bite. I don't think you'll see through with the light. No, I can't see nothing through the light. It's the wrong sort of wood for that. You really want that to be a wet bit of wood, but we're getting there. Still got some more here to take off.
Yeah, I'm happy with that there now. A little bit thick there. Yep, you can hear that now. You can start to, a lot of it I do by sound as well. I do by listening. Right. We're going to keep this gouging because we're going to be using that for going up the side. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of the sanding on this now because I don't want to do it like when I've got everything. And I'm only starting with 240 grit, okay? that edge there. Right, I'm happy with that. That's good that's good, and it's not getting hot neither, that's, that's good. Right, okay. Well, let's see what we're going to do. What gals are going to use? Let's see if we can use this one. Now see, the difference in the grinds here, can you see them? Okay, which means I can use, this spindle gouge is great for going down the side, okay? It's got 45 degrees. This one's got a, a 50. Means I can go, I can do the sides, but I can go round the bottom on this one, okay? I'm just going to lengthen it out a little bit. Then this one I can, this is my double ended one, see, and I've got a longer grind on that one. This is my Crown Cryro Super Duke Bar. Go to space, come back and it won't melt when you come in re entry. <laughs> it's got that sort of steel. <laughs> you can have it in your pocket. You'll be melted, dead and gone, but your chisel will still be there. <laughs> Just in case I ever go to space to do some turning. <laughs> you never know what you're going to be asked to do. I've got a lot of wood to remove out of this steel, so I'm just going to go for it at the moment, guys. And remember, you don't want any silly tower bits coming up in the middle. I ain't going to do, you know, I ain't going to help this. This is done. It ain't going to strengthen for nothing out here. Okay? Get yourself a little rhythm going. I'm a little bit high there. Get yourself a little bit of a rhythm. It's, it's a good, all good, uh, all good practice. See, this one's lovely. Lovely to go down across the bottom. Right, I've got to watch the uh, feet one going now. Right, lovely to go across the bottom. Look, beautiful smooth bottom. Most women would like the bottom like that. 
Look at that. Beautiful. But not as good for going down the, the sides. So going down the sides, you want a nice steep grind. Like this. This one loves it. But this one loses it there. No good going across the bottom, see? Too steep to grind, you won't hold it. Now see, I can hear I'm getting thin. Yep, I think we're probably near enough thin enough on that side there. So now we've got to switch back to this gouge. Well actually, what I would say to you for this bit is the six mil, hey, the six mil hollower. Come on, it's got to come in at some point. A little bit high for it, I think I'm angling down, am I? Or I'm just, no, we're all right, we'll keep going. We've got to come in with it at some time, haven't we guys? I mean, it deserves its place. Right. Now then, I will have to stop in a minute and get an accurate for the depth because we're going to be turning it around taking that top off. Um, So I'll get a depth, uh, a, a depth thing in a minute. I really need this. Uh... There we go. This is that little six mil. It's so aggressive. I'm sure I can hear the wood laughing because it's tickling it. <laughs> Right, okay guys, um, yeah, we're really nice and thin, we're nice and thin. All we want to do is get our, check what our depth is there. Um, you'd think I'd have something, wouldn't you really? Right, that's about right. Look at that. Very technical. Now, let me just check my thickness. No, I ain't gonna reach. It reaches here though, does he? See these guys, look. You wanna see this? Now, look, I am actually one minute. Look at that, look at that thickness. That's what I am on this rim, okay? These, 89p. Okay, they're actually for measuring your fat. <laughs> now, obviously, they're no good for me, <laughs> no, but they do good for this. You know, if you want to measure the thickness here, because you get readout, so you can see it's actually it's, it's one and a half mil. And that's what I've got, one and a half mil thickness. Brilliant. <laughs> the other thing I've got was this lovely little uh, gauge for marking up on your, your wood. Look at this. These come from, I don't know if you ever sit. Why am I shouting? Could have told me I was shouting, didn't no. you? You just leave me shouting like I'm some kind of bloody Yelling. ranged idiot. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, this like, a lovely little bit of kit. Look at that. Bosch. 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 Oh, Bosch. <laughs> Bosch, there you go. And that will give me exactly where my centre is. Quick and easy like that. That, actually, that's a really nice solid bit of aluminium. That was, I think that was, was it seven quid, seven. I think? 
Paying about oh. seven quid. These yeah. are off of what's it called? Temu. Temu. T E M U. All come from China. You yeah. put in an order. It's like you know trainers for one pound fifty something <laughs> and all that. But be honest, guys. They are good. They are good. They are good. It's good <laughs> stuff. And that that's like yeah. I've got that. I've got this little thing. Eighty nine p little. Um, it says for measuring your fat, <laughs> like that. Well, obviously, I'm bloody hell. You know, it's more fat on a butcher's pencil. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I thought that would be brilliant for, for, for doing these thicknesses. And being this, this plastic, it won't actually uh, hurt anything, will it? So, right, anyway, guys, you can hear it. Yep. yep. So, we're down there. Our depth, like I said, we, we've, we're... We're down deep enough because I've got to turn it around and take that tenon off. So I mustn't go anywhere into that tenon. So I think I'm deep enough there, in all honesty. Put that mm -hmm. back. Get rid of that. Quick mouthful of coffee. Oh, busy day. That, you almost blew that into your coffee mug then. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> right, okay. We're, we're doing all right there. I can actually feel I've got a little bit of thickness up in that top. Let's have a go with these. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm still thick in the top. I'm fine down here. That's the top bit. There. Yeah. Still still a bit thick up there. So I've still got, look, I've still got something to go. Still got quite a bit of thickness on this, this wall here. Okay. So we'll bring that, we'll be bringing that down. Right, I'm going to. Hang those on there, don't let no one, because I'll forget where they no, are. No, yeah, you'll be talking I'll put it back up there. If everything has a home, put it put it back in its home. Always easy to find. Yeah. Right, sorry guys, I got sidetracked there a bit. I don't know why I get sidetracked, but I always do. Right, okay, so I've got a bit of thickness up there in the top, so I'm going to come in, I'm going to take a nice little pass, I'm going to take a little bit from that top there without going through it. I'm just going to clean me... Look, look, if you ever think mm. about do you need to work with Vespray, look, look at the dust on this, look, look, right? Yeah. Where would that have gone if I hadn't been wearing that? Down your throat. In there. All in my lungs. That would have gone in my lungs, that. Guys, really, ser in all seriousness, don't turn up. I know they're expensive, but at the end of the day, it can save your life. Show the sign again of the mask because someone was asking. My about mask the other day. is the APF 10 Evolution okay. Axminster Tools. I, I don't, yeah. what's it, but you know, yeah. Axminster, <laughs> it's fantastic. There's other makes out there um, you can get, there's some brilliant ones, but wear something, guys, protect your lungs because you do not want to be breathing all this in. You really don't. It's an expense, but I'll tell you what, I, I'd rather. I'd rather save up for something like this than save up for tools or so. Get, get, get that protected, mm -hmm. really. Right, okay, let's carry on. Enough chit chat. <laughs> right. We're still nice and sharp. We've done nothing to blunt it. We're still like a razor. We don't need no sharpening. Right, we're going to... Because we're picking up this cut and I, so I can't go from here. This is thin enough. So I'm going to go down there, run my bevel back, and then go in. Right, now that's one mil, but remember it's one mil from both sides. Yeah, that's not too bad down there. Back to the uh, six mil, because we've got to come across. We're at that point now where we've got a flat bottom and we cannot get across with the gouges. They're not going to allow it. Right.
Right, I've smoothed that up. I've got rid of those ridges. Right, the bottom I'm leaving at that because it's there, it's done. A little bit of sanding on it and we'll be hunky dory. Right, let's um, see if we can get in here. Hang on. That works better if you turn that on. Be careful here guys when you're sanding this, if you're using a power sander, be careful, don't make it too hot, you don't want it to crack on you, that's nice and cool. And I mean I'm at 1750, that's probably one of the slowest speeds I've turned at, for a long time. But I'm only on 240 grip paper. The bottom I'm going to have to do by hand because I can't get this in there. I'm going to make a, I'm going to make an extension bar for this, so I can actually have that longer. I mean, it's not, as I said, when I'm doing this stuff, guys, it's like, when I don't sand a lot, it's not, I've got nothing against sanding. I've got nothing against sanding, everything has to be sanded. And I've got that, take this off for a minute. Take this off for a minute. I'm not doing a lot of sand. I've got this here, this is, look, sucks everything, that. Something went up there. What went up there? I don't know. I, don't, I thought I saw something fly up there. I thought I saw something fly up there. I don't know what it was. <laughs> no, I can't see anything there. I thought I saw something move then. Yeah, I heard too. something. Yeah. There's nothing here. Nothing's come off of this. No. <laughs> right, yeah, I've got to do the bottom here. Right, so. Got to take that up. Starting on one A, you've got to take it up to the 40. Yeah, sanding. See, mm. what I say, guys, is don't don't use sanding to get rid of your tool marks. I have to take that real fine cut in there to get rid of the tool marks before I start sanding. Um, like I said, it, I mean, you can. It's up to you if you want to do it. But a lot of people say they they get frustrated because they can't get that good finish. Well, this is all sort of off the tree. You see, a very little bit of sanding. Um, and a lot of it, like I say, I do because I'm doing it on... If I was making this, I'd probably spend about three or four hours making this hat. I'd really take my time and enjoy it. Right, I'm using on here hard wax oil, right? Now, if you read the instructions on this thing, it's like you apply it and it's four hours before it's touch dry and all that sort of crap. Right, and then you can buff it up and everything because it actually dries like hard wax. But, and there is a little bit of a buff. <laughs> like fortunate for me, see? Because if you put it on here, like over 2000 RPM, we're at about 2200 now. This will pretty much, you can get it to, to dry. If you put it on with the lathe 
I should be, I'm being tight here. Look, this one's all gone crispy and I should be using a test bit really. <laughs> I'm just being tight. That's all that was, look. That screw. Yeah, nice soft bit. <laughs> and it'll fit in there nicely, okay? And yes, this is a, a it's a micro cloth, okay? But don't worry about it. I'll take full responsibility for what I do. If you want to use tissue, but tissue won't do this job, see? All I'm doing is I'm putting this hard wax oil on. Plenty of it. And if you put it on with the lathe spinning nice and fast, you can see what you get. And when you get enough of it on this microfiber cloth, it sort of, it holds it. When you first put it on, it's those magic cloths, you know, they, you can have a, you can have a wee on the floor and this will soak every little bit up, a little bit of cloth like this, and those magic ones. Always handy to have a bit in your pants if you've got a long day, because if you do have a little dribble, like a bit like a tenor lady, you know, <laughs> they're magic, they soak up, soak up gallons of pee, these things will. <laughs> Sound like you talk from experience, darling. <laughs> well, you just bring it home and you know, get it out, stick it under the tap, and yeah. rinse it out, and it's ready to go next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, guys, what I'm saying is, if you just don't don't get it over hot. Keep feeling your wood. It's not. This is cool. This wood's cold. Have a feel if you want. <laughs> this is this is cool still. Okay. I'm very lightly touching, but. The wax gives it a really nice, really nice finish here. And the other side of it, I'll do once I've turned it round. The uh, hard wax oil. It's an oil, so it's gonna oil the wood. But I'm probably wrong, really, because I'm letting it say I want to actually wet this, and I've just thought about that, really. Should have thought about that before. But I've got, I want to put something on it, so that's what I'm doing. I don't know where it's going to run, let's stop that and have a look. Oh yeah, look at that, beautiful. That's looking lovely. Right now, this comes to the bit where I've got to chuck it up. Chuck it up. Chuck it, <laughs> chuck it up. <laughs> right, there we go, I've got to chuck it up. So now I've got to look at how I'm going to hold this to take the other end off. Now I do have, I would put a light in, I have a light, okay. Um, Perfect. Right, I, I, a light isn't going to shine through this wood, okay? It just does. I mean, that is. Let me have a look. No, that that is really thin, uh, but the light doesn't shine through it at all. It's not a wet. You want a wet wood for that, okay? So there's no point in me putting a light in. I do have a light. This this goes into my other jaws. I'll just show you it so you know. It can go in this, these jaws. This goes, this actually goes right through my headstock like that, comes out the other end, and I'll plug into that. And this actually sits up inside here. And then this is held internally. Probably won't work on this, or it might do. I normally use it on the other jaws I've got there. So this holds on here like this, right? That's like that. That's in there. Oh, and this three spins. And what I do, I've got a pair of mole grips, okay? They clip on the end, like uh, so. Now, that gives that the weight. Now, this can spin and spin and spin, and the light is inside there. I plug the light in, the plug's over there, plugs into the back. This can spin, the light stays still, and when your hat's on there, held, the light will shine through. You can see how, far, how slim you're doing, the, how thin you're doing that, okay? The bottom of the hat. It's one of these lights that goes in now. Even that, I mean, that's a really bright light. I've got a little it's bit shining through, a little bit of red, but it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough to do that bottom. So I know all I need to do is take that tenon off and that's the top of the hat done. I'm getting bits over it, but it doesn't matter because it's going to go in the machine anyway. 
it's going to go in, in the machine for a while. It's going in. <laughs> See, and that sits... Oh, I've got to take the mold grips off. Sorry, forgot about that bit. That sits in... Look, my trap like that. See? It sits in there. It can't... Look. So, open it up and... Get it. It's there. That's it. It's just that catching on the inside bit. But it comes out. And all that is, that's one of these lights from Lidl's. Seven pounds. All right, I got it. Took it apart, took it off of there, took it apart, extended that a little bit, I think, did I? Yeah, that's the cable. So I put a little bit of steel rod, extended it. You got a, a little plug. See this here, look. There, on, off. So that plugs in there. So what that will do, I can show you with that. There, mm -hmm. see? Yeah. Don't want to blind you. Mm -hmm. That plugs in there, and there we go. I've got a light inside my chuck shining up through there i made that look that all in there so that light fits in that sits in there that spins around hats on that light shining through happy days see what we're doing <laughs> there you go don't you all wish you had one of those right okay guys so I'm, i can stick with these chuck. i normally would put that onto that that chuck because it's it sticks out a bit further but this goes over, over, over. Right, over, and it's for this this sort of size of hat. So just nipped up, that's it, not over tight. I think that's, uh, I don't know, that's not holding quite right, that one. Mm, let me see. That's gotta be all right, because I'm gonna center, cent, center that anyway. Right, that's on. Put my key up there. That's going to be going over that, but I'm going to be putting a little bit of do brief and stuff on the top of it. You know what I mean? The, uh, what, the, the mesh mat. Router mat. Yeah. Router <laughs> mat. In. Right. Okay. Chisels are going back. Sorry, guys, if it's taking a bit of time this video, but there you go. What else are you going to do? <laughs> Right, got a bit of route, route matting, see? Got some bits here. I'm gonna be bringing my Tank. twirly holder bit up. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do, um, I want the real pointy one, cause that's a, a lever point. I want the pointy one to hold it. Okay, so that's gonna come in there. Now, because I turn it between sets, I've still got a centre holding point. Okay. So I should, should be in the, the word, be able to get onto that. That's it. There we go. It's just, it's a, a friction. Hope and a prayer, that's what it is. <laughs> a wing and a prayer. Right, a, a wing and a prayer. <laughs> and that is it. And we've got to be very careful when we can. We'll probably sand off that last little nib anyway. Because it's it, this is the delicate part. You can't push hard, guys, because we're only one and a half mil thick or a mil thick at best, whatever. Um, and you'll, you'll just break the hat. And you don't want to get to this stage and then tighten it up <laughs> and break it, do you? So there we go. Right, I'm going to turn it down a bit because I did turn it up for the for the other bit. There we go. We're spinning away. All right. We're nice and flush here. We're only to, look. We're only. I can stop the towel. I can stop the towel. So I'm just going to tighten that a little bit. A little bit more pressure. We want enough pressure, but we're going to come in very carefully. Turn a little bit more speed because that's going to help us. <coughs> Right, okay, we're just over 1800 on that. And what I'm going down to a small spindle gauge now. So I'm just use a little one. I'll put my crash helmet on. I'm going in. <laughs> and all I'm going to do is make some little cuts in like this.
Now I know I can pretty much just take away this this tenon, so. I just want to put that little dip in there, see? On the little dip for the ridge of the hat, the top of the hat. There we go. Again, so don't, don't scrape it. Slicing cuts, if, if these are coming to you, you'll see. Look, my bevel, my bevel's there. Right, so it's just a rotate and that's all it is, is a little, look, it's just a slicing motion. I'm just slicing it down. Okay, slice down. We can't do any heavy cuts here. Because we're, we're just, we're just holding by, and as this is getting thinner, I can't now, I can't stop it and I can't tighten it. If I tighten it, I'll probably pop through the hat. If I stop it, when I start up, the chances are it, something could go wrong. The inertia of it starting. I know I'm thin because I can hear it. Yeah, I'm thin, okay? Now, I know I've waxed the inside. I'm not going to do anything with the outside because I, I really, I want to, well, if I might leave one side of the rim, I might put some oil on this bit. Okay, and I'm going to do a little bit of a sand on here before I go any further. Then it'll just be the last little nibble to get off. And I'll probably sand that off, okay. Just start with your 180, then go down to your 240. Don't need any lower than 240. Sorry? No, I'm only doing this little bit. It's gone now. That's it. It's all right. It's done. It's finished. That's it. It's done. It's done. No point telling me when I'm done, is it? Well, I'm just doing that as a tester to see whether you would have noticed. No, you failed. Right, okay, I'm going to put some more oil on here. A little bit just here. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And I'm leaving this rim, guys. I don't know whether it's going to make a difference. Um, I'm leaving it at the moment because I want to wet it and I'm thinking it's going to absorb the water through there because I put oil on the other side, the water won't go right through. That's my plan. Right, okay, that's that bit done. Got some news for you as well, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, anyway, let's get this in. We'll get this done first, then I'll tell you the news. What we're going to be doing. do that so right, luckily I've got to take that bit away anyway right I'm I'm really going to leave it at that guys and I'm going to sand that bit away because I'm not even going to use a skewer or anything to cut it off because I, I really think that could yeah that's that's fit enough 
Right, I'm just going to sand that um, and get rid of that that little knob all there. I don't think that's going to take long to sand away. I'm glad I bought that. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's a pretty flat top. I would have rather had, I, I think I sanded me dip in the way. But never mind. That's where the sand is a little bit. Well, no, I've done that hand sand, actually, didn't I? Yep. But anyway, a bit more oil on that. There we go. Okay. Right, so, let me just leave that there for a second. It's going to get dirty, because my hands are a bit dirty, but it don't matter, because I've got, I've got to wet it all, yeah? I'm going to be wetting it, and then um, what I should do is I should put that in the in the jig. Yeah, that's got, I can see it, it's got movement there. That's going to go in the jig, and it's going to get it to curve. Then I should give it a little clean up, and I'll probably give it some more oil, and then that's going to be a another nice little cowboy hat by the time that bends up okay and that's all done that's all okay all sounds the same so it must be all the same thickness look i've got a little bit dirty in there from the the matting but like i said this is going to be i'm going to actually submerge that in water to get it to really soak in some water then i'm going to take it out i'm going to put it in the jig and I'll see how it goes. I might put some hot water over it or I might steam it, put some steam on it. Because this is dry wood and I want it to turn. But it's very stable. I mean, you think that that's, that I, actually, I can actually really see that that, that is like a Cheeky Cheeky Bang Bang. Now, Cheeky Cheeky Bang Bang goes wild west. Woohoo. Wiki Wiki Wawa. <laughs> right. Okay, guys. That's, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Little cowboy hat. Um, right. This. Now, on a few future videos. Lisa mm -hmm. is going to do a bit of turning. Oh my god. Lisa's gonna <laughs> Lisa's gonna learn some wood turning. Um she's done a little bit in the past. She did a little bit of uh, roughing down some blanks for me, but she's long long forgotten how to do that. God, yeah. Um and I've said before Lisa has a, a a bit of a problem because it's like when she's watching these sort of things, you can't see it guys. Um when this is on there and this is spinning, Lisa has to turn away a lot of the time. She can she can watch, but then she has to turn away because it makes her go giddy. She actually she <laughs> starts to sway a bit and she goes a little bit. So we're gonna sit that's why she didn't continue with any turning before, because she felt she had trouble when she's there like this, the spinning wood. I mean, she's not too bad with spindles. It's more when it's bowls yeah. going round. Uh, yeah, she she comes over a bit bit funny, so that's we've got to be careful in what what she does. But she's going to have a go at doing some spindle work. So on like the next video, mm. you're going to see Lisa learning, for, and I'm going to teach her and talk her through it. So if you're new to turning, you'll be able to watch how she's going to start as a novice and turn. Yeah. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little bit of that and see how we go with it. Obviously, it's a little bit more awkward for she's got a slight disadvantage because she is a woman so oh you know God. and this is a man's sort of you know thing as we know guys and but, every man needs a woman <laughs> yeah every man needs a woman to cook and clean and things like that oh. you know every woman has a place in this world it's just keeping them in it that we have trouble doing <laughs> <laughs> girls i'm doing this for us <laughs> no in all honesty like it's it should be good good bit of fun lisa's yeah. going to do a bit and We'll just see how she gets on. So, and it might help you guys because it's going to be some real in-depth talking on what we're doing now. Mm. She's going to present the tool and how she's going to get the cuts. Okay. Uh, none of this, um, I'm sorry, I don't go by all this ABC crap. And I like yeah, Lisa's <laughs> closer to 50 than oh she is to 40 God. now. She's not a child. Oh, my Sometimes uh, a mental age, I wonder, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> not she's not she's not a child, 
and I'm not going to talk to her like she's a child. ABC and all that crap is a load of old crap. It yeah. really is. Come on. Yeah, so if I went for a lesson and someone talked to me about ABR, I'd punch them on the nose and ask for my money back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not a bloody child. Don't talk to me like one. <laughs> right, anyway, guys, that's that. There you go. Cowboy hat. That would, make, that would make a lovely big gonk, that, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, like, yes. Look at the size of that. would make a nice good But you can't have it because that's my hat and that's my, oh, my hat jig. Man. Right, okay, guys. That's been a long video. I'm sorry about that. So, a lovely drill. Yep. <laughs> That done, that, yeah, yeah, I quite like that, quite enjoy that. Look at that, I might be converted going into the sanding world. Oh Never know. Um, little chainsaw, 28 quid, guys, come on. Yeah. I thought, well, if it don't work, 20, it was 28 quid, come on. Most of you spend that, well, that's not even a night in the pub, is it? Let's face it, yeah. you know. 28 quid, lovely little thing. Works perfect, I'll see how long it lasts. I've done, I've cut about, I've cut two of those, Two, two slices. I've cut that eucalyptus. I did cut a lump, lump off of it before that, just to make sure that it's going to cut that sort of wood. And I've cut quite a few of these little things. This to the burn them. I cut that bit in half with it. That's that's really hard wood as well. It's cut those, and it's still staying a full charge on the battery. So, you know, I'm I'm very happy with that. Absolutely very happy. Really, really good. Really pleased. It seems seems well worth it. So. 28 pound they're on ebay just put it on there that one sissy sissy viz or something sissy, sissy viz hmm. yeah Keep they're all up. the same Saku, 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 they're all they're all going to be made they're all made in china and they're all in the same factory they just have different stickers on same as all your other stuff doesn't it they just put different stickers on for different firms companies that's all it is but it's all the same stuff so we'll see how it goes guys if it lasts I'm not saying it's not for cutting down trees and doing all your big logging, but if you've got something on your lathe and you want to take a little corner off here and a corner off there or a branch off there, like said on Shady Acres, go and give his a watch. You see, he, he went out and cut a few trees down with his, you know, so it was good. Anyway, there you go, guys. Welcome to the Wild West. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Goes West. Yeehaw. There you go. Right, I will see you on the next one, guys. Toodle Pip. Bye, guys.